What's up everybody, let's talk Jets Radio. Quick video here, previewing Jets Pats. Um, kind of like I said last night during the live stream, I'm not feeling too good about this game. I, I think that if the Jets were playing almost any other team coming out of the bye week, this might be a, a much easier matchup to show some progress and to work on some things. But going up to Foxborough against Belichick, 0-4 Patriots on, uh, at home, and, and all that they're up against. And the Patriots are still supposed to be a win-now team this year. They spent a lot of money. I can't see Belichick looking past the Jets this game. It's by no means a trap game, as we talked about last night. Um, we're going to get the Patriots' best effort, and we've already seen Mac Jones uh, you know, starting to show progress, looking good mechanically in an offense that kind of suits what he does well. And you're waiting to see the same thing from Zach Wilson. And the problem I have is that I almost feel like the bye week could do more harm than good for Wilson for a kid that's probably just kind of swimming uh, mentally right now with you know with all the different looks that he's already gotten to see in the NFL through five games, not to mention you know the, the Patriots beating him up the first time around, four interceptions, coming off the rough game in London. You almost feel like the extra week to kind of look at tape and you know evaluate what's going wrong, that might lead to him overthinking some things, holding on to the ball too long, not pulling the trigger when he identifies something, wondering if you know Belichick's just trying to trap him into a throw. So you hope that he's able to, you know, kind of trust his natural instincts and make some plays. But, you know, you, you kind of feel like more realistically, there's a good, good chance that he's going to overthink things and, you know, maybe hold on to the ball too long or, you know, reach a point where he feels like he has to make a play and start forcing balls into tight windows. Uh, whatever it is, though, you know, you hope that the coaching staff will do what's best for him as the game progresses, meaning that if he doesn't have it, you know, we, we've said that, yes, they should have somebody else as a backup, but if you got to put Mike White in there, so be it. You know, it, it's not worth ruining this kid over one game if he doesn't have it. Um, but I'd like to see him go in there and light it up. I think it would mean a lot if he did. I think it would mean a lot for not just him, but for LaFleur, for Salah, you know, for everybody to come out of this bye week a little bit recharged and, and, and show a little fight. Show, you know, show that you can put up some points early on in the game. Show that you can make some adjustments. Get, you know, Elijah Moore the ball. Get Denzel Mims involved a little bit. You know, Michael Carter, he should have a bigger role if Tevin Coleman's out. Show that you can make some adjustments on defense without C.J. Mosley. So th there's a, a lot of questions that we should be able to find some answers to this week with the extra time to prepare and just seeing, you know, what kind of jet team we see. I, I don't personally think it's going to go too well. Um, but if you do get a good effort from this team where, you know, they, they can put together two, maybe three uh, pretty long, sustained touchdown drives, keep their defense from you know, being on the field for you know, 38 to 40 minutes, you know, maybe you're in this thing in the fourth quarter. And if that's ultimately what happens, you know, you take that as progress, you take that as some growth and, you know, you hope to start, you know, stacking weeks, you know, as the season goes on. And by the end of the year, you hope that there's actually legitimate growth that you can point to. And, you know, just to kind of end, I know in my last video that I did, uh, I got some uh, some feedback, I guess, that I was too harsh in, in, in talking about the, the building blocks on the Jets roster. And I, I think to an extent, maybe that's right. I'll, I'll reword some of what I said in that, yes, the Jets have building blocks, but I'm, I'm curious as far as how many building blocks they have that actually move the needle right now. How many guys, you know, and I'll just throw a bunch of names in there that, you know, I'm kind of lumping all together between Elijah Moore, um, you know, John Franklin Myers, Bryce Hall, Bryce Huff, you know, Quincy Williams, um, you, know, you want to throw Sherwood and Nastral Dean in there, you, know, you want to throw some of the other corners in there like Michael Carter, Brandon Eccles. These are all good young players that hopefully are going to be, he uh, be here for a few years. And if they are, yes, that fits the definition of a building block. The problem I have is that where do those guys fit in on playoff caliber teams? Where do they fit in on championship caliber teams? And how far do they move the needle from getting the Jets from being in this perpetual rebuild to ultimately getting them back to being a competitive team that's fighting for a playoff spot? And then once you actually get over that hump where you're fighting for a playoff spot, then how much more do you still need to actually get to that point where you're, you're fighting for a championship? You're able to compete with the Chiefs and the Bills and, and all those teams you know, year after year, Ravens, Steelers, all those teams year after year that are actually fighting for a championship. So that's kind of where I'm at, where I feel like, yeah, you know, we're, we're starting to add some building blocks, some young guys that should be here long term. I, I think that Eli, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, he kind of fits the mold as somebody a little bit different that could actually be like a, a legitimate anchor on an offensive line, um, you know, a possible Pro Bowl caliber player. Kai Becton, if he's healthy, I think could be that. But, you know, we've already seen plenty of injuries, not to mention, you know, his issues with his weight and everything. Uh, Marcus May, I think, is probably on the way out.
C.J. Mosley, great impact player, but he's also a middle linebacker. How much does he really impact games? So I, I think there's a lot of legitimate questions. And, you know, even with C.J. Mosley, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Quinn and Williams, with all this money that you've already invested into the defensive line, you know, $15 million per year for Lawson, John Franklin Myers, not cheap by any means. He's close to $15 million as well per year. Um, and then, you know, what are you going to do with Foley Fatukasi? You're bringing him back. So you're investing a lot of this money in the defensive line. Do you bring back Quinn and Williams? Can you afford to bring him back? And, you know, even if you do, with all those guys that you're paying, well, who's your stud pass rusher that's changing games? Can you rely on Carl Lawson coming back from injury to be that guy? Will John Franklin Myers, you know, he's only 25. He should be getting better year after year. Can he emerge as that guy that can put up 11, 12 sacks? So a lot of these questions, you know, hopefully as the year goes on, we get more and more answers to. Hopefully we can start feeding Elijah Moore the ball a little bit more. Same thing with Denzel Mims, get some answers on these guys. Although I still think, you know, there's a possibility you could bring Crowder back. By, by, by no means is he a guy that's old. Um, you know, so at age 28, I think it can make some sense to bring him back, even if it's just for depth. Because um, you need to have, you know, three, four, five deep at wide out, you know, if you want this young kid to succeed and, you know, really be given a legitimate chance. So we'll see what happens. But I, I think that some of us are definitely putting a lot of these guys on a pedestal and just kind of, you know, trying to elevate them into something that maybe they're not or something that at least they haven't proven to be yet. So, you know, I'm just looking at other teams and, you know, the amount of talent. And, you know, we were talking last night about the Ernest Johnson, a guy that was, you know, kind of buried on the, the Browns depth chart, third running back, might have even been the fourth running back into a training camp. And he gets his opportunity, a bunch of guys go down, and he actually looks the part, like a, a legitimate, you know, three down back, making plays that we haven't seen all year, you know, from, from our running backs. So even a running back like Michael Carter, who I think we're all pretty high on, we like his game, you know, a diverse running back and help out, you know, in between the tackles as well as, you know, catching passes out of the backfield, even a guy like him, you start asking, well, compared to other running backs around the league, is he a, a top 15 back? No. Is he even a top 20, 25 back? I mean, we'll see by the end of the year. But right now, is he those things? No, he's not. So I just think there's, there's a lot of questions on this team right now. You know, even the tight end spot, we have no idea what we have there. Pretty much we don't have anything. Um, you know, maybe Kenny Yaboa emerges as something as the year goes on. He gets an opportunity. Um, you know, but a lot of these positions and the right side of the offensive line, especially plenty of questions there. So I just feel like, yes, we're starting to get some answers. We're starting to find some building blocks, some young players that should be here for a little bit. But I still don't know who the guys are that are really moving the needle and truly rebuilding the Jets, truly rebuilding the culture and getting this team back to competing for a playoff spot. And like I said earlier, once you actually get to that place where you're competing for a playoff spot, then you still have a, a whole nother level to get to where you're actually competing for a championship. So I, I think the Jets still have a long way to go. I think Joe Douglas still has a lot of building blocks that he has to add. He's got, what, two first-round picks, two second-round picks, three sixth-round picks, plenty of draft picks next year, plenty of cap space, no excuses anymore. He's had two full off-seasons. I don't personally think we have enough to show for it, considering all the resources that we've already invested into this thing. I think that we should have a lot more. But next off-season is going to be huge. You know, coming out of the bye week, there's no excuses. The remaining, you know, 11 games that they have, no excuses. And going into next year especially, you know, everyone will have a year under their belt. Absolutely no excuses. So hopefully we start to see a little bit more. Hopefully some young pieces emerge. Go Jets. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Getting home, working on the bingo board. Should be a fun one. Talk to you guys later.